So I think under the setting of paper two, everything is okay. And now you know where question one, two, three, four, five, and six are going to come from. Now, in the definition of terms, in the definition of terms, I'll go through it very, very fast. So you asked a question concerning define. These questions are always very easy. Our uh, most of our students always uh, don't read this. You always go directly, like in the transfiguration. Most students do not know the meaning of transfiguration, but when they are told to describe the transfiguration, they can describe. So it is good for a student to be able to define. Define is to give a precise meaning of a term, giving a precise meaning of a term. So you cannot tell me a disciple is a disciple. A disciple is a follower of Jesus. Transfiguration is transformation of physical body into heavenly glory. So that is how you, you and sometimes uh, you can be asked a question like when you're told to give the meaning of the certification. What is this? Because I know you are reading that end part of form four. And this particular, like soil erosion, you know, most of you always give the meaning of soil erosion as introducing of impurities to the soil. So it is good for you to go back and read the meaning of soil erosion, the meaning of air pollution, the meaning of, uh, of air pollution, uh, the meaning of desertification and deforestation. When you talk about desertification, you can be told to de define the term desertification. That is entrenchment of a desert or a desert-like place to arable land. So it is good for you to give a, a precise meaning of the term. So another one is uh, concerning name or list or div. Here, you are supposed to list names. Only a list of names is required. Mention the names only in a statement form. So you're supposed to be mentioning the names in a statement form. Pros. Pros. Like uh, the question, list five titles that prophet Isaiah used to refer to the future Messiah. So that is in 2019, that was the first question. Prince of Peace, Eternal Father, Everlasting, you know all these names. Eh? All these names, you know them. Wonderful, Counselor, Emmanuel, Mighty God. So these ones, you know, when you're told to list, you can be told to list uh, anything that you, anything that you, if you're told to list any causes of poverty, you list them. Lack of jobs, misuse of family resources, and the rest. Number three, identify. It means singling out or to single out or to sort items from a group. So for example, you can be set for a question, identify seven ways in which Christians demonstrate their faith in God. So identify seven ways. So identify means single out or sort items from a group. So they give offering, uh, Christians pray, they confess and repent their sins, by building places of worship, they undergo baptism, visiting places of worship. These are, you show faith. Even reading the Bible itself, composing songs, it's always a way of showing your faith to God. Question four, uh, 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 that is a num uh, number four here about definition of terms is concerning state. State means giving a statement that should make sense, putting, it, uh, the, putting the answer in words. State five reasons why Jesus used parable. I think this is a very easy question that most of you are aware of. So why Jesus used parables to attract listen, uh, his listeners or audience uh, to provoke his listeners to, see, uh, to seek out serious listeners from keen listeners. So as you can see, as I'm giving my answers, I have used the slash, the stroke. The stroke is my, uh, uh, those are answers that I was giving. So in the exam, you're not required to use a slash or a stroke. So that is just to give you, Jesus used parables in order to attract listeners or the audience. So another meaning or another word that is used for listeners are the audience. So you only give one in the exam. When you're told to give, you can only say, Jesus used parables in order to attract listeners. You just choose one. Don't use the stroke in the exam. Or you can use a conjunction or. Jesus wanted to provoke his listeners in order to isolate serious seekers from, it was a common method of teaching during that time. So five, uh, you can also to, be told to explain means giving a reason or reasons clarity is required here. Explain the Jewish expectations concerning the Messiah. So Jewish expectations concerning the Messiah here, most students are always are aware of these particular questions. 
uh, the Jews expected the Messiah to come from the lineage of David. So uh, the Jews expected the Messiah to come from uh, a, royal descent, a, a royal descent. So a royal descent means somebody who is rich. I, they expected him to be a political leader. And because he was not political, that is why the Pharisees and the Sadducees opposed him. The Messiah would convert Jerusalem to be the center of rule. So those are the answers I gave. The Messiah was expected to make Judaism superior religion. Uh, the Jews expected the Messiah who would perform miracles. So we are still explaining the terms describe. It means characteristics, processes, generally giving the storyline. So as an examiner, in paper two, remember we are talking about paper two. In paper two, when you talk about the term to describe, when you talk about the, time to the term to narrate, when you talk about the term to relate, all these in paper two are the same because you are going to give me the events. You are going to give me the events that happened. You can be told to describe the incident in which Jesus had the last supper with the disciples. You can be told to describe the preparation of the last supper. You can be told to describe the parable of the good Samaritan. Do you know the events? So when you're told to describe, and I'm, I'm, I'm repeating on this, most students are always confusing. They say that when you're set a question concerning relate, in 2017, this particular question relate was set and the students were told to relate the events that happened during the uh, to relate the events that happened during the Last Supper. Yes, the Last Supper, it is here, the Last Supper itself. The, not the preparation to the Last Supper, the Last Supper, the order of events. So Jesus took his place on the table. He told them that he had desired to have a meal with them. Jesus then took bread, gave thanks. So you have to say Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, then he said, no, when Jesus took bread, when Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it, there's something else that students always miss in the middle here. When Jesus said, he said, I will never, I will not take this bread again until it is fulfilled. Do it in remembrance of me. Read, read well, Luke's gospel. When we go to for markings, we always go through the Bible. The marking scheme is, all, is always already set, but when we go back, because of the way we teach our students, we always go back and we make changes. As we are making changes, we always deduce the points from the Luke's gospel, the Bible. When Jesus took a cup, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and then there's something he said. He said, I will not take of this vine again until, I will, I will not take of this, I will not take of this vine again until the kingdom of God comes. Then that is when he said, for you, this is a new covenant in my blood. So these are the points that we add, because as we are teaching in class, we always tell our students to read the Bible. So there's a student who, who might have added that point, and in the marking scheme, it's not there. So it is good for us to describe the events. And I always insist that as you're describing the events, make sure you go back to your Bible. Go back to your Bible and give the events the way they occurred in the Bible. So I've insisted and said, in paper two, describe narrate giving the story and relate as the same thing you give me the events the way they happened in the bible then i uh, state that uh, these are just uh, differences and distinctions in differences and distinction we always have a problem here and the problem that comes in differences and distinction is that when a student is given is given a question concerning state the differences between the work of john the baptist and jesus for example the work of, you have to understand john the baptist because when you read your bible very well john the, john the baptist came from the wilderness and a voice is heard there saying at calling people for repentance john was preparing the way for jesus so it when you're answering your question here, I've not talked about, I've, I've not yet gone to the place where now you're supposed to be answering. The answering techniques, Jafika Hapo. So what I'm supposed to be saying, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing is that you're supposed to know that differences and distinctions. When you're told to give the differences, you're supposed to be using co conjunctions. I think they're called conjunctions, Dis giving a distinction. And when you're giving a distinction, you're supposed to use whereas or why. Like in the differences between John the Baptist, the work of John the Baptist and the work of Jesus. John baptized with water, but Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
John preached in the wilderness while Jesus preached in the synagogue and even, and even in the temple. John called people to repentance while Jesus forgave. Jesus lived the life of a Nazarite while John, while Je uh, uh, John lived the life of a Nazarite while Jesus mingled freely. We see Jesus mingled freely, it is true, because Jesus mingled freely with everyone. Remember the tax collectors, remember the reasons why Jesus was opposed. Question about fasting, question about mingling with the tax collectors and the sinners and the rest. So he mingled freely. G John uh, preached about the Messiah while uh, Jesus preached about the kingdom of God, which was soon to come. So I have said that as you're giving the differences, please, as you're giving the differences, make sure you use whereas or why. That one is well understood. When you're giving the, and do not draw tables, as you're giving the differences, most of our, of our students, they give the correct answers, but they draw tables. You draw a table of two parts. You write differences. Then this other side, you write John, and this other side, you write Jesus. Of course, you are going to be giving the correct answers, but in the exam, when you do that as examiners, we don't give you a mark. We will give you zero, zero. You have scored nothing. I have given you a rule and I've told you, consider using the conjunctions whereas or while, while you're giving your, you're giving your uh, differences and still don't draw a table. Draw, uh, make sure you give the answer in a continuous prose form. We call it statement. Don't, you can, the other students also will, who will now draw a table and they say that Jesus preached in the wilderness why, and you are still doing that in the table. Avoid tables. Make sure you give your answers well using conjunctions. When you're told to give similarities, uh, something that is similar, a synonym between traditional, and, uh, 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 it's not a synonym like in English, but similarities between traditional and Christian uh, Christ, Christ, Christian view of work. So in both, work is mainly for the purpose of acquiring basic needs. So whatever we always mark here is that the students always know the answers, but you have to repeat yourself. And don't use, how are they called? They are post of, uh, you, uh, that, the, the, you always use some, it's like a post, you, you want to show me that in the first point you wrote in both, uh, in both work is mainly for the purpose of acquiring basic needs. So you are tired of writing in both. So you try using those, they are like apostrophes. You use them so to show me that now you, you write, work is ordained from God, work is encouraged, but you don't write in both. When you do that, I will only give you a mark in, in point one. The rest of the points, no, no mark. So you have to make sure you, you repeat yourself in both. Work is mainly for the purpose of acquiring basic needs in both work is ordained by God. In both, work is encouraged after leisure. Outline means stating and explaining. That is another term that is used in the exam. Outline what angel Gabriel revealed about John the Baptist. So whatever angel Gabriel revealed about John the Baptist, those ones you are supposed to outline. Outlining, you are supposed to give in a statement form. And if it reaches a point where you're supposed to give a point and then you explain, like when you're told to give the problems that are, uh, uh, like you, you can be told to outline problems available in families today. That is the particular uh, topic family. There are problems in families. If you're told to outline now there, it can also mean to state and explain, depending on the question. In this particular, question, outline what Angel Gabriel revealed about John the Baptist. Here there is nothing to state and explain. It is giving in a statement from what Angel Gabriel said about John. He was going to be a Nazarite, not taking wine or drinking wine. John, he, would be a, he was going to be a son or some of you write a boy, we will give you. His name was to be John. So if you're told to give, to outline problems that are present in families today and you say maybe a wastage of resources when you give let's say a wastage of resources or, or sickness or disease so you give you say sickness or disease put a full stop don't put a hyphen when you're outlining and you've stated your point for example you say the problem is disease that is available in family disease put a point that is a full stop then explain if you put a hyphen that that particular uh, point won't be marked correctly that is going against the rules and that is why I'm here to make sure uh, to make sure you know 
how to answer. Then discuss means giving reasons for and against where applicable. Discuss four causes of unemployment in Kenya today. So discuss is deducing, you make judgment. You give synthesis, you make judgment. These discuss questions are always mostly synthesis. So discuss four causes of unemployment in Kenya today. Uh, pre uh, preferences for prestigious white collar jobs. Family expectations also make the youth to prefer only white collar jobs. This is from four work. Corruption denies better qualified people opportunities for employment and an equal distribution of wealth and the rest. That is a discuss question. So when you're discussing, a, when you're told to discuss four causes of unemployment in Kenya today, number one, you don't just give your answers because I think uh, from our syllabus coverage, we are able to give these points in the exam. Don't give the points that you know. We have discussed it with you in class and they are there in the employment. Here, we, is, they are covering the topic work. And here, that, those are the points. When you're asked about discuss, make sure you are able to discuss it in the right way. Okay, give six reasons why Jesus, uh, these are just extra questions, give six reasons why Jesus used bread and wine during the last supper, that was 2017. Most students, uh, the reason as to why I wrote that question as an extra question is that most students did not know reasons why Jesus used bread and wine during the last supper. I think as teachers, when we teach, we only give the preparation of the, to the, of the last supper and the last supper itself and the significance or the reason, or the lessons we learn from the last supper. But reasons why Jesus used bread and wine during the last supper, this one was set in 2017, it wasn't performed very well. It was a common meal. So why he used the, the, the bread is that it was a common meal uh, for, for uh, it was a common meal for Jews, for Jews, not for Jesus, for Jews. Jesus used bread because unleavened bread was used during the Jewish celebration of the Passover. So. That is why he used bread. Jesus used wine because it was a common drink for the, for the Jews. Jesus explained that uh, the bread represented his body while uh, that was used for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus used wine to present his blood that was to be shed in the ceiling of the covenant. Jesus used bread to demonstrate that he is bread of life. Jesus used wine as a sign of fellowship and unity. So that one, uh, I think from after my presentation, we'll have uh, the work given to you so explain how the unity of believers is expressed in the image of the bride so this is where i wanted you to know that particular particular question in question four where you can be asked about the unity of believers here you can be asked about uh the people of god the church and the rest so this one was 2019 last uh, last year but one where the students were told to give the you, the bride and this is how it was marked so christians are bride one so if you say if a student just gave that christians are the bride you are not given a point you have to say christians are the bride while jesus is the bridegroom christians are the church so christians generally are the church so christians are to be committed faith or to be faithful to christ as christ was committed to the church so you have to relate to these two incidences the church is loved by christ just as the bridegroom bridegroom's bridegroom loves their wife so the church must remain pure or holy through love faith in jesus bride keeps her purity for her husband the committed christ uh christian to be taken to a new home like jesus uh john saw jesus going to prepare the new jerusalem for the christians so that is heaven so it is good as you are giving this bride you're supposed to give two parts and i insisted and said as you're giving this bride and the church make sure you give two particular parts if you only give one part like in the church this a student says that a christian a, a wife should love the husband or a Christ loved the church. That is not a point. You only you have to say that the husband, sorry, the husband should love the wife, just like Christ loved the church. So you have to give two parts of the point so that you are able to get a mark. Remember, I need five marks, five marks, five points. So five points given in statement form, continuous prose. Now, I think uh, I've covered all the, uh, all the, uh, uh, words that are used to set the exams. 
and the only one that maybe is remaining here is concerning maybe the lessons that are learned, the lessons Christians learn from a particular parable, from, uh, from the choosing of the 12 disciples and the rest. So for you to give the lessons that Christians learn from the choosing of the 12 disciples, first of all, a student should be able to know the in events during the choosing of the 12 disciples, even the first disciples. After that, you are going to give me the lessons that are learned. So you cannot give lessons that are learned if you don't know the event it itself. You cannot give me the lessons that are learned from the incident when Jesus cured, uh, healed the widow's son or raised the widow's son in name, if you don't know the events that happened in the healing of the widow's son in name. Because in the widow's son in name, in the widow's son in name, we have the widow's the widow, with the, the widow herself, we have the congregation or the group that was following Jesus. We have Jesus himself. What lessons do you learn from Jesus? What lessons do you learn from these people who are following Jesus? Faith, what do you learn from this widow? So make sure, this is how we give the lessons learned. In a particular event or in a particular story, you're supposed to have the, the people like in the uh, but when John the Baptist was baptizing Jesus in River Jordan, we find that we have John, we have other Christians who are also being, uh, other Christians who are also being baptized, we have Jesus. So there's a lot of lessons that you learn from Jesus there. There's a lot of lessons that we learn from John. There's a lot of lessons we learn from those people who came. And on that particular question that I've also given you, you should also know the reasons why Jesus was baptized and yet Jesus was sinless. Those are the reasons you have to know. Now, I think I've covered all the, uh, the terms that are used in setting of our exams. And before you choose your exam, as a student, you are supposed to know the term. If they tell you to explain, you should know what they are telling you, when they tell you, if they tell you to discuss, if they tell you to relate, describe, I think for now, you are well conversant with the terms. <laughs>